Wow. Journalist reveals 2005 photo of Obama and racist Farrakhan kept secret to protect Obama's career. Now they tell us, more than a year after President Obama finally left office, a journalist is finally revealing a photograph he deliberately hid from the American public for well over a decade for the explicit purpose of shielding Obama from political backlash. Talking Points memo has the details, including the story of a panicked phone call placed by a Congressional Black Caucus representative who was desperate to prevent the photo from going public. A journalist announced last week a journalist announced last week that he will publish a photograph of then Illinois Senator Barack Obama D and Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan that he took in, in 2005 at a Congressional Black Caucus meeting but did not make public because he believed it would have made a difference to Obama's political future. The photographer Askia Mohammed told the Trice Edney Newswire that he gave the picture up at the time and basically swore secrecy. But after the nomination was secured and all the way up until the inauguration, then for eight years after he was president, it was kept undercover. Muhammad said, asked whether he thought the photo was released would have affected Obama's presidential campaign. Muhammad said, I insist, it absolutely would have made a difference. Reached by TPM on Thursday, Muhammad said a staff member for the CBS co for the CBC contracted him. Sort of in a panic, after he took the photo at a caucus meeting in 2005, Obama's 2008 presidential campaign was dodged by criticism of his radical associations, ranging, ranging from a crackpot anti-American preacher whose church Obama attended for decades to an unrepentant domestic terrorist whose home Obama launched his political career to a convicted felon and slumlord with, with whom Obama engaged in shady business dealings, to a longtime spokesman of the PLO terrorist Yasser Arafat. A videotape of Obama and Rashid Khalidi together at a party was suppressed by the Los Angeles Times and has never been released. A picture of Obama smiling widely alongside avowed racist and anti-Semite Louis Farrakhan would have been yet another, another major headache for his campaign and very well could have hampered Obama's trajectory toward his once improbable primary upset over Hillary Clinton. It may have caused a jita among more general election voters who were contemplating whether to entrust their vote to an unknown political newcomer. So the picture never saw the, saw the light of day. Mohammed said he gave away the disc from his camera but copied the photograph from that day onto a file on his computer, realizing that I had given it up. I mean, it was sort of like a promise to keep the photograph secret, Muhammad said. Muhammad said he thought the photograph would be damaging politically if it were released, and was afraid that someone might break into his apartment looking for it. Like that Watergate crap, he said. He felt a little bit more at ease after Farrakhan in 2016 claimed that Obama visited him, visited his home in Chicago. Muhammad also told TPM that around this time, around the time he took the photo, he asked Obama about a perceived resemblance to Farrakhan. I asked the senator, has anyone ever told you that you resemble Minister Farrakhan? Muhammad said, and he said, what? And he said, what? I thought it was a perfect answer. Well, he's much better looking than I am. Based on this account, Obama didn't merely pose for a photograph of the prominent figure known for routinely spewing racial p poison. He kissed up to the guy by flattering, uh, flattering his looks. None of this proves that Obama himself shares any of Farrakhan's odious views. I doubt he does. But it once again demonstrates that Obama's moral compass was virtually always pointed in the direction of his guiding North Star. Fulfilling his pro prodigious personnel ambition no matter what it took. The TPM story concludes with a recollection of Obama publicly objecting to Farrakhan's racial bigotry. 
and anti-Semitism when pressed, but declined to fully reject the infamous hate monger's positive comments about Barack Obama. I did not solicit his support, Obama said, referring to Farrakhan's prayers for his candidacy, but I can't say, but I can't to somebody, but I can't say to somebody that he can't say that he thinks I'm a good guy. This, reminds, this reminded me of Donald Trump's game of footsie with another grotesque bigot, David Duke. It took Trump far too long to unequivocally disavow Duke in the KKK. He eventually did, leading to intense media criticism, including from yours truly. Many of Trump's defenders and critics alike recognized this kerfuffle as an outgrowth of, then, of the then-candidate's pathological need for uh, affirmation and his aversion to harshly criticizing anyone who feeds his ego. It seems that, on some level, the current president and his immediate predecessor same, share that same impulse, a juke's taposition. Guy Benson, Trump was roundly and rightly condemned in the press for dancing around his disavowal of vir virulent racist and anti-Semite David Duke. A journalist deliberately withheld a photo of Obama grinning with virulent racist and anti-Semite Louis Farrakhan explicitly to protect Obama's career. Can you imagine the reaction if it emerged that Trump had met privately with Duke and praised him as a handsome man as they posed for photos and smiles, and that the House, of, the House Freedom Caucus pressured a photographer to never allow his documentation to become public? I think he can. And just so we're clear, Duke and Farrakhan are two sides of the same vile coin. For over 30 years, Louis Farrakhan, leader of the Nation of Islam, NOI, has marked himself as a notable figure on the extremist scene, verbally attacking Jews, white people, and the LGBT community. In recent years, Farrakhan has embarked on a wide-ranging campaign specifically targeting the Jewish community, which has featured some of the most hateful speeches of Farrakhan's career as, the head, as head of NOI. Farrakhan used his platform to discuss the, role, the supposed role of Israel and Jews in orchestrating the 9-11 attacks, claiming that Israelis had full knowledge of the, of the attacks and that Jews were warned ahead of time not to come to work that day. He then went on to speak more broadly of Israeli control of the American government, start stating that Israel and Jews don't fear America because they control it from within. Farrakhan received a standing ovation after telling his audience that the satanic Jews that control everything and mostly everybody, if they are your enemy, then you must be somebody. He's also hurled venom at white people, calling them race of, the race of devils, the Antichrist, and worthy to be hated, as well as the LGBTQ community. He is the moral equivalent of Duke, to whom Trump was linked because of Duke's praise of his candidacy and Trump's opaque, opaque and dishonest responses to resulting challenges from reporters. By contrast, Obama said he opposed Frank Farrakhan's spasms of hate ideology, of hateful ideology, but hey, who was he to tell the guy to stop saying nice things about him? That evidently was an acceptable answer, and the issue disappeared. Beyond that, when the two men met in private, posing for a chummy photograph, Amanda reported mutually glowing banter. Evidence of the occasion was confiscated and kept in the shadows for a dozen years extraordinary. It's, a, it's simply a fact that Barack Obama spent much of his early adulthood and fledgling political career marinating in a fever swap of far-left radicalism. Some evidence to that effect was intentionally censored by sympathetic journalists and media organizations, while other public revelations were drowned out by righteous shouting about the injustice of guilt by association attacks. If you thought Trump's episode vis-a-vis -vis the Duke endorsement was problematic, as I did, surely Obama's deeper connection to Louis Farrakhan should be considered both appalling and re revealing. No? If the, former if the former was disqualifying, so was the latter. Or am I missing something? Obama met, took a photo with, and praised Farrakhan as a sitting senator just a few years prior to launching a presidential bid. 
Multiple people were aware of this encounter. How was it okay for the Congressional Black Caucus to have fettered such a figure in the first place, incidentally, and took active steps to cover it up? Voters, have, voters never learned of it by design. Amazing. And now they tell us.